On to our last project, a full stack web application that interacts with the database. We'll be creating a web application that keeps track of ongoing projects and tasks associated with those projects. The first page of our web application will list all the projects we're working on and give us the ability to add a new project. Each project will have a link that takes us to a different page to see the tasks associated with that project. From the task page, we'll be able to add new tasks for that project as well. To keep track of our projects and associated tasks, we'll be using a Postgres database and SQL Alchemy in our Python application. We'll also be using Flask, which is a Python micro framework. With Flask, we'll be able to connect our routes to our web pages and add functionality to trigger data modifications in our database. Our web pages will be built with basic HTML and CSS. The goal of this course is to look at how databases can be used within a Python application. So while we'll introduce Flask and some other web technologies, the focus is on what you can build by using databases in Python. If any of these other technologies spark your interest, I encourage you to check out the other courses in the library. With an idea of how our project will work, we can start to set up our virtual environment. We'll need to CD into the workspace to activate it. Now we'll use a few dependencies in this project. The first is SciCop G2 binary. This will allow us to connect to the Postgres database. We'll also install SQL Alchemy. This will make it easier for us to interact with our database in Python. The last thing we'll install is Flask. Flask will help us build an API and wire our application together. With these tools installed in our virtual environment, we can begin to create our full stack Python web app. With our virtual environment set up, let's open up Sublime and start setting up our application. The first step is to set up a simple Flask app. This version won't link to a database. Instead, it'll contain static content that doesn't change. Later, we'll replace the static content with dynamic links to our database. Let's save this file in our workspace. We'll call it app.py. Then we'll import Flask. We also import render template, which will help us render our HTML files. Next, we'll initialize our application. We create it with the name of the file and save it in a variable called app. With this app variable, we'll be able to set up all the routes in our application for our website visitors to go to. Like we saw with FastAPI, these routes are the different URL paths in our application we're providing content for. The first route we'll define will be the home route. We'll link it to a function called show projects. This function will render a template and we'll pass in the file we want it to render, index.html. Let's make this HTML file. First, we'll create a folder named templates. This is where the render template function looks for a given HTML file. In our index.html, we'll write up a simple HTML page. It just has a header that says projects. Let's go back to our app.py file and set up our application to run. We'll access our app and call the run function. Here, we set the host to our local IP address and the port to 3000. This means the app will run locally on our machine at our home address on port 3000. Let's run this application. We'll head over to our terminal. There are a few ways we can run the app, but to keep things simple, we'll just run our application with Python app.py. And this is with my virtual environment already activated. Let's check it out. 
we'll copy the URL and put it into a browser. There it is. There's our projects page. It says projects right now, but soon we'll fill it with dynamic data. Let's make the project homepage a little more sophisticated. The page will list a set of projects, and each project will link to that project's associated tasks. To start, these will be hard-coded, but eventually we'll populate them using data from a database. On our projects page, we'll add a list of projects. We'll use the UL tag to create an unordered list. Each item in the list will be a project. Now the tasks associated with each project will be linked as a part of the same application. This means they'll live on the same host. We'll host them on the route project and then have a path parameter that represents an ID number associated with that project. Let's add the links. Here, we'll associate the first project with ID 1, the second with ID 2, and the third with ID 3. When the link is clinked, we'll be taken to that project's tasks. With that taken care of, we'll add a form for the user to add a new project. When the form is submitted, it'll be directed to the add project route. This submission will be sending the new project data, so we give it the method post. Now let's decide what the form will look like. Here, we'll have the project name and then a text field for the user to add their new project name. In order to submit the form, we need to add a button. It'll be a submit. And the label on the button will be add project. The user will submit their data by pressing this button. Perfect, our index.html template is set up. We haven't defined the individual project routes or the add project route, so none of the links or buttons will work. However, we will be able to run and view this simple page. Let's do it. We'll head over to our terminal and activate our workspace. Then we'll run the app. Let's check out the landing page. There's our projects. Let's add a header at the top to make it make a little more sense. We'll do that in our index.html. It'll be an H3 header. Let's run our app again. That's better. We have a list of projects and then a way to add a new project. Like we mentioned before, these are hyperlinked, but the links will work in later videos. With the single page up and running, let's add some more routes. The next route we'll create is for the individual project pages that will contain the tasks. We tied this to our landing page template, but now we need to define it in our application. The route we called in the HTML template is project project ID. So let's define that here. Project ID is our path parameter. This lets us define the functionality for all the individual project pages. For this route, we'll create a function called show tasks. It'll take in the project ID as input. We'll call this function when someone visits an individual project page. When it's run, we'll want to render another HTML template. We'll render a file called project tasks. We'll also pass in the project ID as input. With the project ID passed to the template, we'll be able to use this value in the template. Let's create this HTML page. It'll live in the templates folder. For now, we'll create a very simple page that just displays the project ID. We can access the project ID with curly brackets. 
Here, we add it to the heading. All we need to do now is create the routes that let us add a project and add a task. Since we don't have a database set up yet, nothing will actually be added, but we can set up sample responses that will be loaded when the add buttons are clicked. First, let's create a route for adding a project. This is used on the landing page for the add project form. We only want this route to be accessible to post requests, because when it's used, we're creating new resources rather than retrieving data. That's why we have the methods parameter. We didn't need to add this for the other get calls because the get method is default. When a request is received, we'll run the add project function. This function will eventually read the request body and add the new project to the database. For now, we'll just write a comment saying add project and add that dynamic functionality later on. After the comment, we'll return a confirmation that says project added successfully. This will automatically render in the browser as just a simple piece of text. The last route will be add task. We'll also add a path parameter named project ID. Since data should be added to the database with this route, we label it as accepting post requests only. We also tie this route to a function called add task. Since project ID is in the URL and we wanna use it in our function, we'll add project ID as a parameter to the function. Eventually, we'll also want to read information from the request and insert it into the database. But for now, we'll just write a comment and implement it in a later lesson. Let's test our application. For the buttons, data will not be added since our database isn't linked yet, but we will be able to look at all the flows of our application. We'll activate our environment and run the file. The project page still exists. Let's click on a project. There's our tasks page. Let's see project two and project three's tasks. These all render as expected. What if we add a new project? It'll render, but it won't actually add the project since our database isn't linked yet. All of this is hard coded, but soon we'll be able to feed data from our database into these pages.